Bloodline family and Hello. congregation. Uh, we welcome you on behalf of Bishop Stevenson and the great members of believers here at the Red Sea Baptist Church. We count the joy and the honor that you joined us today uh, during this worship time. So come on in and, and prepare yourselves. Uh, we come together and we've been blessing the Lord this morning, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And we pray that you come in and to join us. We're going to be one body today, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God that's going to be working through us all so that he may be glorified today. So our um, we're going to have our first, our last inspirational song. And immediately following that, we're going to stand as we sing our hymn of affirmation or whatever the worship of minister, the minister of music has for us to do. We're going to do that as we receive him today. Minister John Stevenson Jr. will be bringing forth the word today. And so we want to uplift him in prayer right now. Will you pray with me, with Bishop? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so very, very much for everything that has transpired this fall. We give you glory, we give you praise for the gift uh, that you have uh, blessed our ministry with in uh, Minister John today. God, as he's already prepared to bring the message before your people today, God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you will yes, fully Lord. consecrate him. Right now, God, that you will prop him up, that you will strengthen him wherever he may be weak at, Father, in the name of Jesus. You know his limitations, but you also know the gift that you've made him. You already know the power that you have put on the inside of him. We thank you for the word that's in his belly that's going to come forth. I pray, Father, that all of us will be receptive, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will receive this word joyfully, Father, in the name of Jesus, and that we will honor God and praise God and thank God for this young man, this preacher of the gospel. We're so proud to, to be before you today. We're so proud to humble ourselves before you today and to hear what it is that you're going to say to this powerful young man of God. And we give you glory, we give you praise for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome to worship, My breakthrough is coming. My breakthrough is here. My breakthrough is coming. God said, so it is so. Your breakthrough is coming. Your breakthrough is here. Your breakthrough is coming. God said it. So it is so, it is so, it is so, it is so. God said it, so it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. God said it, so it is so. Be encouraged, my brother. Don't lose faith, oh my sister. It's coming, it's coming. God said it, so it is so. Be encouraged, my brother. Don't lose faith, oh my sister. It's coming. Is coming. God said it, so it is so. My breakthrough is coming. My breakthrough is here. My breakthrough is coming. God said it, so it is so. Your breakthrough is coming. Your breakthrough is here. Your breakthrough is coming. God said it, so it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. God 
God said it, so it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. God said it, so it is so. Be encouraged, my brother. Don't lose faith, oh my sister. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. God said it, so it is so. Be encouraged, my brother. Don't lose faith. Oh, my sister, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. God said it, so it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. God said it, so it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. God said it, so it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. God said it, so it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. God said it, so it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. God said it, so it is so. It is so, it is so, it is so. God said it, so it is so. God said it, so it is so. God said it. So it is so. God said it. So it is so. One more time. God said it. So it is so. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we give you thanks for being a man of your word. And God, if you said it, it is so. Because you said that it is impossible for you to lie. Mm -hmm. And God, you have spoken to us over and over again in your word about how your word will not return void, mm -hmm. but it will accomplish everything that it goes forth to do. Mm -hmm. God, you are faithful. You are promise keeping God. And everything that you say is yes and amen. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. if you say it, God, we can bank on it. And for that, God, we are we are grateful. I may lie to him, God. We may lie to each other. All right. But it is impossible for you to lie. Amen. God, we'll even lie on you sometimes. Oh. But it is impossible yes, for you to lie. Sober. Yes, sir. And for that, God, we are indeed grateful. Mm -hmm. So, Holy Spirit, uh, guide me. Use him, Lord. Guide me. And you speak. Yes. I'm just a vessel. I'm honored to be standing here, God, in front of your people. But God, it is your word that is going to make all the difference. Yes, God. Yes. So have your way. Please have sir. your way, Lord. God, when I open my mouth, you speak. Yes, Lord. I decrease it that you be increased. Have your way. Ooh. And let's make it happen. Jesus name. Make it happen, Lord. Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Soldiers in the army of the Lord, present arms. This, this is, is my weapon. weapon. I am armed and dangerous. Look out there, the light, light is on. Amen. Amen. If you can, uh, turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse number 20. Now, while y'all are turning to that, I just want to say um, thank you to the, the deacons and the ushers for honoring me earlier. And uh, thank you, Bishop and Reverend, for honoring me as well, uh, because I do honor y'all as well. And, and uh, before the congregation, I'm going to say this, I'm going to do better at honoring y'all. God bless openly, you, sir. Uh, because y'all have, have been good good to me 
as far as leaders and as far as parents. So I thank y'all. And I do thank God for this opportunity uh, to be standing before his people. Are we all at Revelation chapter 3, verse number 2? Uh, yes. yes. Amen. 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 Wait on me. Yes. Wait on me. This, uh, this, this message here, I thank God for it. Because when he gave it to me, I didn't really understand it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I still don't fully understand it. That's right. But, uh, but my prayer this morning was, God, you know, continue to give me revelation even as yes. as we preach it. Yes. But um, I think I got the gist of it. Amen. 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 And uh, let this message be an encouragement and a reminder. This won't be new information. This is a reminder message. Um, Revelation chapter 3, verse number 2. Are we there? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's go ahead and, and read this. And I'm coming from the, the New King James Version. I thank God for this nice new Bible that he's given me. It's been a, a beautiful blessing. And the scripture reads in Revelation chapter 3, verse number 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you take your finger and circle if. Yeah. <laughs> you take your finger and circle mm -hmm. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him. Or as the, the King James Version says, I will sup with him and he with me. Amen. 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 May the Holy Spirit give you revelation, give you revelation of his word. Amen. May he bring it to your remembrance in the days to come and may he help you apply it to your to your lives. Um, God gave me a title for this. Sermon. You may be seated. He gave me a title for this sermon. The title for this sermon is. God can't do whatever he wants. Amen. Mm. Amen. God can't or cannot do whatever he wants. All right. Now, when God said this to me, I was like, snap. What? God can't do whatever, whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read what God has, has given me here. Um, he says, I do what I want is a phrase that we have all used, and it's a mantra that many live by without even saying it. Wow. Now, let me pause there for a minute. As I was pinning this, now I had wrote some stuff down in a different tablet. Uh -huh. um, as he was giving it to me, that's where I kind of write it down real, real quick, you know, before I lose it. And it's all sloppy. So then I try to bring it back to my other, my other notebook to where I can kind of write it out, right? Uh -huh. Now, he gave me this, as I was rewriting this last night, getting it all nice and neat and pretty so I'd be able to actually read it when I got before y'all. He dropped this word mantra in there. Mm -hmm. I said, mantra? He said, I've heard this word before, but what does it mean? Right, right. I looked it up. Did you know that the word mantra is a word directly from two other religions? Wow. Hinduism and Buddhism. Wow. That's right. All right. It is a term or a phrase that people use and they repeat it over and over again to help them with meditation. Wow. And it's something that they live by. I said, wow, it's interesting, God, that you use this word. Right. That it's a mantra that we live by. Because wow. like, you know, when we live under the I do what I want phrase mm -hmm. and lifestyle, we are under a whole different religion. It ain't Christianity. All right. Come on, sir. He had me to write this as well. He said, our actions say it. Though we don't always say I do what I want with our mouths, right? I remember at one point I was saying that. I do what I want. I'm grown. I do what I want. He said, we don't always say it with our words, but our actions say it all. But how dare we live like this and buy this when God himself doesn't even operate this way? All right. The phrase and mentality slash lifestyle is demonic and satanic. To live by I do what I want, that is demonic and it is literally satanic. Mm. The church of Satan believes in this phrase. Right. They just phrase it differently. They say, do what thou wilt. Yeah. Right. Wow. Alistair Crawley yeah. has been known to say this. Right. Do what thou wilt or right. do what you do want. What you right. do. It's literally mm. satanic right. to, to, to live under this mantra yeah. or this lifestyle. Because mm. though we don't say it over and over again, it's our, it's, it, it runs our thoughts. Right. Our, it runs our very, very thoughts. He said, this goes back to the worshiping of me. The same thing that Satan attempted to tempt Jesus with in Matthew 
chapter 4. If you do what you want, then your God is you, and that is idolatry. So God says, how dare we live this way if he doesn't even operate in this fashion, uh -huh. right? Yes, sir. So the, so the title that God gave us was God can't do whatever he wants. So the question is, why can't he? Come on, sir. Why can't he? Well, one reason why God cannot uh, uh, do what he wants. Well, let me read this piece here first before I go into why he can't. Okay. God is all powerful, all knowing and ever present. But God operates in a certain way because he loves us and because of what his character is. See, we do whatever we want, right? Like, we'll say a thing and then go do something different. Right. But God is not operating in that way. God doesn't just up and decide that he's going to do something because he, quote, unquote, wants to do it, right? Like, we'll get upset with people or we'll just wake up one day and change our mind and we'll do something either completely different than what we plan to do or what we said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. But God does not operate in that fashion. Right, right, right. God can't just do whatever he yeah, wants. Right. Now, mind you, he's not like us, right. so we can't compare him to us, but roll, roll with the Holy Spirit on this, okay? <laughs> he says nothing is too hard for God, and yes, all things are possible with God, that's right. but he cannot do whatever he wants because that's not who he is. Is. Come on, sir. This phrase does not limit God's power. Right. That's right. This God, this doesn't say that God doesn't have the capability right. of not doing on, some sir. things. Come it on, just sir. means that God is not just out here doing That's whatever right. he wants. All right. That's good. All right. That's good. God, so here we go. Y'all ready for some scripture? I know yeah. you are because <laughs> we preach according to the scriptures. That's right. That's yeah. right. Come on. Amen. Listen, my son taught me earlier this week. You better use the text, sir. <laughs> Brother was on that couch talking about calling on Jesus, and the Lord is going to do this, and the Lord is going to take care of the monkeys. That brother was preaching, flipping, flipping through the text. I said, "Come on, preacher, because preachers is going to preach. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. God can't do whatever He wants. Check this out. Because though the earth is the Lord's, He gave it." The man. Come on, sir. Come on, that's Come good. On, sir. Let's run to Psalms yes, chapter sir. 115. Yeah. Psalms 115. I thought this was really good when he was showing it to me. Yes, I'm yes, sitting there in my bathroom. I don't know why God likes talking to folks in the bathroom. Especially us preachers. He be talking to us in the bathroom. Hey, look, it don't matter what we're doing in the bathroom. Just start talking. <laughs> I was just walking in there, y'all. I probably wasn't doing that. But he was like, I can't do whatever I want. Yeah. That's just not who I am. That's right. not how I operate. Not. That's how y'all do. That's what he was showing me. That's right. how y'all operate. So we're in Psalms 115, with verse number number 16. Yeah. See, yeah, I don't, I don't just, I don't just do what I want. That's how, that's how y'all get down. But not, but not me, not me. And I'm glad God doesn't just do what he, what he wants. Yeah. Verse number 16 in Psalm 115 says this: The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Right. So he's given this, this planet that we like to call it, he's given it to us. Now, I would like for us to run, to jump all the way back to the beginning of the Bible to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to see some stuff here. Because one thing we know about God, we say this all the time in Christendom, right? That God is a God of order, right? Mm -hmm. And God sets things in a place in place for a reason, and, right. and he does things the way he does it for a for a reason. Right. And once God <laughs> sets a thing in place, he not varying and straying away from that. Right. Because that's just the faithfulness of God. Now, by the end of this, y'all are gonna see why all this is very important. And I pray that it encourage. I pray that it encourages you. Some of y'all may have got it already. I think Bishop was peeking at my notes. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, we are uh, Genesis chapter one, verse number twenty six. I'm not sure if I get y'all the verse, so I apologize. But we're going to read verse twenty six through twenty eight. We're going to look at a word here that I think is that that God has shown me is very very important. Verse number twenty six says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image. This goes right along with, with Psalm 115, verse number 16. Mm -hmm. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And here we go. Let them have dominion. Yes, right. 
Take your finger and circle that unless you yeah. got a pen. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, yeah. over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Yeah. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Right. Verse number 28 says this. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have yeah, dominion, dominion yeah. over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So not only did God say that he was going to give us dominion, he then told us we had dominion. All right. What does the word dominion mean? Okay. I wasn't 100% sure, so y'all know what I did. You looked it I up. looked it up. All right. That's what your dominion about. means, sovereignty. That's good. And it means supreme authority. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. God has given us supreme on, authority oh, over this here earth. Yeah. Mm. That is why he can't just do whatever That's he right, wants. Right. Because he gave us the dominion. Yeah. And what would God look like if he gave us supreme authority uh, and jurisdiction here, and then he just came in doing whatever he wanted. Come on, mm. sir. What would what kind of God would he be? He would be a that's a good word, a mm -hmm. bully, and that would be in the appropriate sense of the word as well. Because we've been using that word bully wrong here lately, but I won't go into that. <laughs> if check this out, if God could do whatever he wanted, he, we wouldn't have to pray. What is prayed in Matthew chapter 6, on, verse number 10. Yeah. And Jesus would not have said what he said right. in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, and Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse number 10, really quick. I think y'all know what's going on there. Uh -huh. And if you don't, well, we're going to go there so we can see it. And we'll be all together. If God could just do whatever he wants, Jesus wouldn't have said these things. And Jesus wouldn't have told us to pray the things Come that he on, told sir. us That's to right. pray. Right. If God could just do right. whatever he, he wants. wants. Remember, this phrase does not limit God's power. This does not limit God's ability. At all. At all. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse number, number 10. Now, we understand that this is what we like to call the model prayer that Jesus gave to us. When you pray, say this, right? Mm -hmm. Verse number 10 says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we have to pray that. Right. When we pray that, that allows God to come, come down yeah. and do what he wants mm -hmm. to do. That's, right. That's what right. that verse is does or that prayer does open it's it's an invitation mm -hmm. right 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 we we saw what bishop tells us about the verse in numbers all the time what nation has a god so great that he's in everything that we call upon him for right. mm -hmm. he's in everything we invite him in right. to yeah. right? right that's where the world has it confused well if god is real why is he letting this happen if god is real why won't he do this? Because you haven't invited. That's right. Mm. That's right. Amen. Why didn't you come to my party, Timothy? John, you didn't invite me. Huh? Right. God, why didn't you stop this from happening? You didn't, you didn't invite, invite me. me. Yeah. God, why didn't you help me? You didn't invite me. Mm. I wanted to. Right, right. Wow. I wanted to heal you. Right. I wanted to, to, to make sure your marriage stayed together. I wanted that. Come on, sir. But you didn't invite me. Yeah. I can't Amen. just do whatever I want. Come on, sir. Because Come this on, is sir. yours. Yeah. yeah. I gave yeah. this to you. Come on, sir. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 16, please. Because again, if God could do whatever he wanted. We wouldn't have to pray. That's right. Your kingdom come, your yeah. will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus wouldn't have said what he says over here in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 19. Now, what he says in 16, 
19, he repeats over in 18, 18. Are we all in Matthew 16, verse 19? Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. He says to he said this. And this was after Peter had came, you know, and opened his mouth and said what what God had revealed to him about you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And he says here, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth oh, will be bound in heaven. Yeah. Right. And whatsoever you loose on earth yeah. will be loose right. in heaven. Right. So there has to be an invitation. Right. There has to be some action on our part in order for God to operate down here in right. the way that he wants to. Right. Because he gave this to, to us. us. Again, this does not limit God's power. Right. This does not limit God's ability. Right. Check this out. Mm -hmm. This is what God showed me. He said, Here's the, the, the plot twist to all of this. He says, uh, we have to pin it this way. God knows that someone is going to okay him. Right. And that's all he needs because there's always a remnant. All right. That's the exactly. reason why there's God is doing what he wants to do right now is because he knows that there's always going to be somebody right, right, that's going right. to give him that yeah. that okay and that yeah. thumbs up. Right. Yeah. There's always going to be that one person that's going to pray, yeah. God will be yeah. done on earth as yeah. it is in heaven. There's yeah. always a remnant. Right. There's always somebody that's going to make it happen. Right. Amen. We may not do it right. because either we in our flesh or we focus on something else or we doing whatever we want to do. Right. Well, somebody being satanic and demonic, doing what we want to do, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. But there's somebody somewhere. Here's the kicker, right? <laughs> when Jesus was on earth mm -hmm. and he prayed that, that was the okay he needed. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. That was, one. that was it. Right. We just come into agreement when we pray it again. Yeah. That was the, oh, that was it. I'm here now. Yes, sir. Mary. Yeah. Mary had to receive what God had, had gave her to come tell her. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. He knew Mary would. Come yeah. on, all you know God. Right. He right. knew all Mary right. was the one. Yeah. That's why he showed up to Mary. Yeah. He knew Mary would do it. So here's the question, right? If God can't do whatever he wants to do, what can God do? Mm -hmm. God can do a plethora of things. Mm -hmm. But let's, there, there are really only about two things that God can do. Everything falls under this category. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the, well, these are two that God gave me. Mm -hmm. If he get, if he reveals something else to y'all, please let me know. Because I want to know all that God could do. First thing that God can do is what he said. What he said. A lot. God can't do whatever he wants. But what he can do is what he said. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Man. What he said. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. See, God created a pattern and a standard in the very beginning of how he was going to operate. Right. And the standard is this. I say it and I do it. Mm -hmm. I say it and then it happens. Yeah. I say it and I do it. I say it and then it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. I say it and then I do it. I say it and it comes to pass. See, God is not just out here doing things outside of what he said. Come on, sir. He's only doing what he says. Everything he does is predicated on, on his word. That is encouraging because God is not out here telling Bishop one thing and then doing something other than what he has showed Bishop. He's not showing, saying one thing to Timothy and then deciding he's going to do something else. That's not how God operates. That's how we operate. Right. That's right. how we do. Right. I told him to take you on a date. Don't do it. That's how we operate. I'm sorry. That's how I operate. <laughs> that's how that's how I operate. I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to get better, y'all. God help me, please, because man, I can't keep dropping that ball. All right, here we go. Check this out. We're gonna skim through Genesis chapter one real quick so we can see this pattern that God has established. Genesis chapter one, verse number three. Mm -hmm. Then God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. Mm -hmm. He right. said it, it happened. Right. Six and seven. Then God said, let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters 
which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Mm -hmm. He said it. It was so. Verse number nine. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Mm -hmm. Verse number 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. Amen. Do we see the pattern? Yes, Let's keep going because there's some more. Yeah. Yeah. Verse number 14 and 15. Right. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmaments of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Uh -huh. What can God do? He can do exactly what he said. Amen. And that's what he is going to do. That is the pattern. Here's the second thing that God can do. The second thing that God can do. Matter of fact, before I go there, let me let me read this here. Because God cannot just do what he wants. Uh, I'm sorry. God can't just do what he wants, right? Mm -hmm. But he also can't do whatever we want. Right, that's right. Right, right. So I think that's very important to it get is, out there. It is. It is. God, can't, God can't just do whatever he wants, and he can't just do whatever we want. Right. We want either. He had to pin this. He said, this is our miscued view of faith. See, we think we can just go out there and do whatever we want, and by faith, God is going to help us with right. it. Come on, sir. Yeah. Brother David, earlier, I'm, I'm going to share this. Is it okay if I share this, what you shared with us earlier about your, your dream? Or your dream when you was a kid. But they said when he was younger, right, he wanted to be a jet pilot, right? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us think that we can just have these, these dreams and these ideas and we just go and do it and God is going to gonna gonna bless us. I, I can almost guarantee if I go out there trying to be a jet pilot right now, I am going to fail 100 times over. Yes, <laughs> because God ain't told me I'm a jet pilot. Right. See, I wanted to be in the NBA. God ain't never said I was going to be in the NBA. Right. No, he ain't never tell me that. <laughs> he, never, he never told me that. But that... That was my desire and my, my dream. And I could have pursued that, but I could not guarantee that God was going to help me along right, the way. Right. Come on, sir. I could not guarantee that. Right. I, could, I could go and, and be in that gym from sunup to sundown every day and three times on, on Sunday. Come on. Come on. But if God didn't say that that's what I was going to be, I can't, I can't expect him to help me with right. it. Come and on. I can't expect right. it to come to pass right. because God is going to do what he said. Right. And again, that's not him just doing whatever he wants to do. Right. And he's not going to do whatever we want to do either. God does not move off our desires. That's why he gives us new desires after we delight ourselves in him, Amen. according to Psalms 37, Amen. 4. Amen. So God is not doing just whatever he wants to do, and he's not doing whatever we want him Amen. to do. Because regardless of him not being able to do whatever he wants to do, he's still in charge. That's right. yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. Though he's given us dominion here, ultimately, he's still in charge. That's right. We have to remember that. We have to put all this in context. Again, by the end of this, I believe y'all will be very, very encouraged as to why all this is important. Yeah. All right. Next thing that God can do. First thing was, he can do what he said. Mm -hmm. All right. We can bank on it. He said it. Yeah. It is so. The next thing is God can do what our faith allows. Come on. Uh, yeah. That's right. Absolutely. God can do what our faith allows. In Matthew chapter 13, let's go there really quick. And we're going to look at verses 53 through 58. Now, this particular passage here is repeated, I believe, two more times in the Bible, if I remember from my studies correctly. Matthew chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Let me get there. Verses 53 through 58. Mm -hmm. This is a familiar text as well. Again, these are, these are reminders right. for us this morning. These are reminders. This, this is not new information. Okay. Amen. Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 through 58. And it reads like this. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When he, when he had come to his own country, 
he taught them in their synagogues so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Mm -hmm. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, uh, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own, oh, his own country and in his own house. Mm -hmm. Now he did not do many mighty works there Come because on. of their unbelief. Wow. Mm -hmm. If we don't believe, if we don't have the faith, he can't do it. Mm -hmm. He can't do it. He can't do it. Now here's the kicker though. There's somebody out there with the faith. That's right. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's somebody out there that's gonna let it happen. Y'all, yeah. y'all want the proof? Yes. <laughs> the two blind men in Matthew chapter nine, verse twenty-nine. Mm. The centurion in Matthew chapter eight, verse thirteen. Yeah. The woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter nine, verse twenty-two, and Luke chapter eight, verse forty-eight. Come on, sir. Bar uh, blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter ten, verses fifty-two, and Luke chapter eighteen, verse forty-two. The, one of the ten lepers that returned to Jesus in Luke chapter 17, verse 19. The Syrophoenician woman in Matthew chapter 15, on, verse 28. Yeah. Them just the ones he told me to write down. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Wow. When you go look at all those situations, right. Jesus says the same thing to all of them. Your faith yeah, has yeah, made yeah. you whole That's or right. your faith has made you well. That's it's right. your faith that allowed me to make this happen. Yeah. See, while the mother folks over my hometown was tripping and I couldn't do mighty works there, I was able to go all yeah. over the place and make some stuff happen because their faith allowed yeah. me to Come do on. it. Yeah. Their right. faith gave yeah. me access. Yeah. Their faith right. was the yeah. invitation yeah. for me to do Come what it was right. that I wanted to do. Yes. Right. Yes. I yes. couldn't just do what I wanted to do. Listen, I wanted to start at home and make it happen, but they didn't want to do it. Come on, man. I wanted to start at the house. Yeah. I wanted to give back to my community. Uh -huh. But they wouldn't invite me to do it. Come on, sir. Their faith wouldn't allow me to yeah. operate in the way that I wanted to operate. Their yeah. unbelief. Come on. Their unbelief. That's their true. lack of faith yeah. is what it was. Check this out. That's what he had me to write down here. Right there. Our faith does not limit God at all. And permission. Mm -hmm does not give him his power. Come on. That's good. Our lack, our faith or lack thereof will either limit or allow us to experience him personally. Yes. Right. This does not give us control over God, right. mm -hmm. only slight control over how much of God we see and experience. Come on. Come on. That's good. That's, that's, good. that's, good. that's what good. our faith, that's yeah. what our yeah. faith does. Yeah. God's actions are based on how we respond to yeah. what he says yeah. our faith mm -hmm. plus obedience, which Come is our on. response, Come allows on. God to do what he wants thing. to do. That's good. Now, here we go. That's good stuff. Why is this important to know? God has said a lot this year, and he's going to do it all. Come on, sir. Because this he year. said it. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. He said he's it. not he changing it. his mind. And he's not going to flake on us. Come on, sir. He's not just going to up and do something different than what he has said. Yeah. He's not like us. We will miss it if we lack faith. Come on, because sir. faith is what allows us to see yeah. what God yeah. wants to do. Yeah. There's so many things yeah. that God has said to us this year. He dropped that song on me this morning. It is so. Yeah. Be encouraged, yeah. my brother. Yeah. Don't lose faith, on, my sir. sister, on, because it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. God said it, it is so on, it good. is yeah. so. Yeah. God is not going to, listen. Hey, all right, listen. Yeah. Can we, I, so, when, I, so with my students, right, I like to play what I call the honesty game. Mm -hmm. And it, it works pretty well with them. Cause I don't, I don't, you know, I don't throw consequences at them every single time, right? Sometimes it turns into a conversation, yeah. a long thirty-minute speech from Mr. Stevenson, <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be. I like to play the honesty game, right? Let's play the honesty game. You ain't gotta raise your hand. Some of them have been disobedient this year. Amen. 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 Some of us, some of us right. ain't did what we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Some of us ain't believed. Some of us Come have on. have have been doubting. Come on. Some of us did been sinning. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But guess what? Guess what? God still said it. Yeah. It is so. Come, right. Come on. He's not going to up and change his mind about what he said because we've been in sin. Yeah. 
because we've been disobedient because we have lack of faith. He's not going to change his mind. Well, they don't believe, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. That's now how God is operating. Right. Now, do we need to tighten up? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Do we need to get our faith in check? Absolutely. Because we don't want to miss out on Come what on. God Come has on. said. Come on. God is not just doing whatever he wants to do. Come He's on. going to do exactly what he said. Yeah. And our faith is going to allow us to see it Come and on, experience sir. it. Yeah. That's good, sir. Amen. So if you like me, because I, I, you know, sometimes I'll be down on myself and I mess up with that. I'm encouraged for the simple fact that I still got some time to tighten it up. Come on, sir. Tie up the loose ends. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 We got some time to tie up our loose ends. Yeah. It's the middle of October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got half of October, yeah. November, yeah. and December left in mm. this year. All right. That is so much time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More than enough. That is so much time. At the beginning of October, God was reminding me. I was like, man, that's a lot of time left. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. God, let's get it. Let's make it happen. Let us get our faith in check so that we can see what God wants to do. Yeah. Because he said it, yeah. and it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. I don't want to miss out anymore. Amen. Me either. Facts. Yeah. For some of us that have been here a while, God has said something to us every year. Yeah. Now I'll only talk about me. We talk about me for a second. We'll talk about me. God has said something to us every year since I'm just gonna talk about since I've been back here. And I'll be honest. I've watched it happen around me. Yeah. And I've got little sprinkles. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've experienced it, the things that he said, but I, I feel like I was only getting a little sprinkles. Little sprinkles. I don't want no more sprinkles, man. Amen, sir. Ah. Amen. I don't want no more sprinkles. Come on, man. I don't want. I don't want no more crumbs. Come on, man. I want to sit at the table. Yeah. yeah. I want to get a fork and a knife and. Yeah. I want to eat mm -hmm. what God is preparing yeah. Yeah. for us. Yeah. Thank you, Tie up the loose ends. Listen, I'm gonna talk about me again. All right. When Bishop said, God said it's time to tie up loose ends, I sat there and I said, God, what are my loose ends? Uh -huh. yeah. He right. gave me one real quick. <laughs> I wrote it down. It's sitting right here. Yeah. Your prayer life is your loose end. Yeah. That's mine. Amen, yeah. Lord. Tighten it up. Yeah. Like, you, you're moving there, but tighten it up. Yeah. Do it better. Do it better. Do it. That's me. I don't know about y'all. I don't know what y'all loose end is, but prayer will prepare you to find out what it is. Do prayer better. That's right. So let's run back to Revelation chapter 3, verse number 20. I hear you, Lord. Good stuff. Good stuff. Because this, this here is not just for us. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that God had me just talk with this person. But he had to start there and end there. Because one other thing that that God is wanting to do. Come on, sir. And he's wanting to save some people. Yeah. But here's the thing. God can't just do that. Right. He's made a way. Yeah. The, the, the price has been paid. Yeah. But he can't just, he can't just, yeah. just, just save us. Because unfortunately, some folks don't know what he's saying. Yes, sir. All right. Some of us have already turned aside Come on, to sir. go after the devil. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. Some of us love our sin to the death. Yeah. But maybe there's somebody at home that's watching. Come on, sir. That 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 thought God was out here just doing whatever he wanted Come to on, do. Sir. But he's not. He needs you to do some inviting. Yeah. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Don't you know that if God could do whatever he wanted to come do, on, sir. he would not. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. All right. All right. Come on, sir. All right. Here's the plot twist. He already got the key. Yeah. Hello. I could come in if I wanted to. All right. But I can't because I can't just do what I want. Come on, man. Come on. That's not who I am. That's the Lord. 
I learned something. I'm going to finish reading this verse this day, but I learned something. Yeah. A person being a Christian that ain't a Christian is in bondage. Yeah. yeah. I've watched people struggle being Christians that wasn't Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They was walking out the lifestyle, trying to live out the lifestyle with no heart conversion. Yeah. Yeah. And it was whooping them. Yeah. Had one young lady. He was having a conversation. The guy had put it on me. He said, just let her know. He said, love, I don't think you're saved. She said, no, I am. I am. I said, no. I said, because if you are, you wouldn't be saying the things that you're saying. And you wouldn't be thinking the way you're thinking. And you wouldn't be feeling the way you're feeling. Because right now, for you, salvation is a ball and chain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salvation. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. For you, is a ball and chain right now. Wow. Y'all know she texted me back the next day and said, you know what, I think you're right. I ain't saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Truth make us free. This is why the scripture tells us that we were free from righteousness before we got right, saved. Right, 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 right. Over in Romans chapter 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Free from righteousness. Yeah. yeah. We was free from righteousness before we got saved because it's a ball and chain to live in this if you're not really yeah. wanting to be in this. Right. 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 Yeah. It's, 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 it's hard. I'm, I'm talking, y'all, watch this whoop this girl. Yeah. I watched it. Yeah. I still watch it whoop folks. Yeah. If you see salvation as a ball and chain, yeah. you're probably not saved. Because yeah. this, this liberty over here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This yes. real freedom over here. Yes. It's real liberty and freedom yeah, over right. here. Thank because you when you was free from that when, from that righteousness, you was a slave to that sin. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's a ball and yeah. chain. Yeah. yeah. And I watched as this young lady, I told her that. She went and lived freely in her sin. Yeah. Mm. I had never seen her smile so much. Yeah. Now, of course, I understood. Baby girl, you're still in a bad place because you need to get saved. Yeah. But there was a freedom that came to her. Yes, sir. Because this thing, God is not forcing us to be saved. He's not forcing us to follow him. Hey, listen. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, it's a choice. If you want me to give you all your possessions so you can go out there and live, prodigal son, I'm dead. Because God is not doing whatever he wants to do. Amen. That's good, man. He's not holding yeah. us down yeah, under exactly. our thumb. No, you're going to be with me. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be a Christian. That's what you're going to be. <laughs> could he do that to him? Yeah. He could. Yeah. But it ain't him. Our arms ain't long enough to box with him to stop him. That's right. right. That's right. But that's not his character. That's not him. That's not him. Because that's not love. Uh -huh. God is love. love. Come on, sir. Finish reading this scripture real quick, but we're gonna go over to 2 Peter chapter 3 now. Mm -hmm. Because we said, What does God want? He wants to save you. Yeah. He wants to save us. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. That if word, I asked you to circle that with your finger earlier. Right. Right. That means it's contingent. Right. That's right. As I was studying for this, God was showing me there's tons of if they oh, yeah. statements right, 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 in the Bible. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so many of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of things. God's love is unconditional. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything right. else got That's conditions. Right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Everything else got conditions yeah. to it. Hmm. Yeah. And we got to do a little something, something every now and then. That's right. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, yeah. then I will yeah. come in. Yeah. The then in this, in this verse is silent. But then it's silent. It's not written in there, but it's mm -hmm. it's it's there. It's yeah. implied, right? It's there, yeah. Run run to Second Peter real quick, and we gonna we gonna get we gonna be about done here. This morning. Second Peter chapter three verse nine. Because I don't want people to think that I'm making this thing up about God wanting to save. See, we have this understanding, or some of us have this belief that God is picking and choosing who's gonna be saved, and then dropping us on this earth, and then. Somehow we magically appear right. saved on his side because that's what it was going to be from the beginning. Right. And then some of us are just whatever. Right. John 3.16 lets me know that God so loved the world. The whole right. world. The whole world. The world. It don't say God so loved his selected. That's 
That's right. That he sent Jesus for his selected. For the ones that he chose ahead of time. That's not what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's conditional, shall believe in him. You got a choice to believe or not. Will not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Everlasting life. That's what John 3.16 says. Mm -hmm. That's like the summary of this whole thing. It is. Here we go. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. How many of y'all had God wait a long time? Oh, yes, I did. Yes. 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 I got saved at 22 and that was still a long time. Mm. Yeah. But is long suffering toward us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Remember when I preached about repentance mm -hmm. before? Yeah. When the Holy Spirit yeah. allowed me to do that. Oh, yeah. And we talked about repentance meant to turn from our idols uh -huh. back to God. Yes. God is wanting us to come back to him. That's what he wants. That's salvation. So we look at that. We read that. And then we look at Romans, I mean Revelation 3:20. Yeah. God is not just doing what he wants to do. He is waiting on an invitation. Yeah. Check this out though. Not only is he waiting on an invitation at times, he's also offering us invitations. Mm -hmm. mm. All the time. Yes. Man. Because we are drawn by his love and kindness That's for right. love. That's right. That's right. We love him because he first loved yeah. us. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to invite him to some stuff, but he inviting us to something too. Yeah. Here's your invitation. If you at home watching this, listening, and you were under the impression that God could just do whatever he wanted to do. A lot of us think that because a lot of us believe in our minds that God is God and that he's all powerful and all these sorts of things. But we also believe that God is going to just jump in when things going crazy for us or when we deem that he should just jump in. But the scripture says that my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. That prayer is an invitation. So here's your invitation. You're wanting God to do some things for you. You're needing God to do some things for you. Mm -hmm. God, I got this, I got this yeah. issue. And I don't know how to let it go. I had a brother who was on my podcast, and he said that he was doing a lot of things, and he was he was messing around with all these different religions. He said the one thing he realized though that these other religions wasn't helping him with his vices. Mm -hmm. He couldn't stop with the pornography, the masturbation, the, the drinking, the smoking, the premarital sex. He couldn't stop any of those things. Those other religions didn't show him how to stop any of that. Right. Mm. Some of y'all out here sleep deprived. Mm. And you don't know why. You don't know how to fix that situation. God help me. Mm. God is wanting to do a lot of things for you, but you got to invite him in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the kicker, though, because God don't play games either at all. So God is not the type to where you invite him into one situation and he cool with that. No, no. God wants to be your Lord and your Savior. All in. He wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. That's what God wants. That's what he wants to do. But you got to accept his invitation. So if you're tired, mm -hmm. if you don't know what to do, God says, cast, no, Peter said it, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Peter said, we cast our cares upon him because he cares. But Jesus did say this, take my yoke upon you. Because yeah. my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you are ready to cast your burdens upon the Lord, 
if you're ready for life to get easier, come on, son. Yeah, there'll be trials and tribulations. I'm going to tell you right now. That's going to come. But it's so much easier on this side. He's standing at the door right now. And he's knocking. And he's knocked before. You know he's knocked before. But you left him at the door. He's here again. And he's knocking. Here is your opportunity to open the door. Again. You don't know if you'll have another opportunity come on, for him to come knock if you don't answer this time. Yeah. Will you answer the door? Listen, God has said some 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 pretty cool stuff to us this mm -hmm. year over at Red Sea yeah. Baptist yeah. Church. Oh yeah, and He just told us that He's going to do it mm -hmm. because Hallelujah. He said it. Hallelujah. And our faith. Is what's going to allow us to see us and see it and experience All right. it. Yeah. All right. God has some stuff that he wants for you too. But your lack of faith, you not letting him in, is going to cause you to not see yeah. it. Yeah. Because he's going to do it. He's going to do it. It's simple. It's simple. Simple. It's real, real simple. If you are tired, if you think, that the Lord being on you, that you realize, you have the revelation. I think here we go. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you have received the revelation and understanding now that you need God, you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need that price that He paid for you. You need that. If you have realized that, now is your time to accept Him as your Lord and Savior, to accept the invitation, and to talk to Him for yourself. Some call it the sinner's prayer, but we call it the prayer of salvation. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you confess with your mouth mm -hmm. and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what it says. That's what it says. It's that simple. <clears throat> and what I want to do with you is because it says confess with your mouth. Who we confess it to? We're confessing it to the one that it matters to most first. And that's God. Yeah. How do we confess anything to God? How do we say anything to God? Through prayer. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important that a prayer be prayed. So I'm going to guide you through a prayer. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit guide me. Yes, sir. You pray along with me. Repeat after me. Salvation will come to your house. You will be a new creature. Life will get easier for you. Yeah, again, there will be some tribulations. There will be some hard times and things like that, but it's much easier on this side. So if you're ready to make that decision, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I confess my sins to you, and I repent of my sins. God, I invite you mm -hmm. into my life. To be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And teach me how to obey you. And I will follow you forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, salvation has come to your house. And we thank God for your salvation experience. It is hands down the best decision you could have ever made. This is hands down the greatest thing that could have ever happened to you in your life. Mm -hmm. um, you may have had kids. You may have gotten married, graduated, all these sorts of things. But nothing tops this. Because what does it profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul? Now salvation makes everything else work. If you prayed that prayer, we would like for you to send us just let us know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to walk in the, the steps of my bishop here. First thing, if you if you prayed that prayer, tell somebody that you got saved. That's part of the confessing with your mouth as well. Let somebody know that you are a new creature and that Jesus is now your Lord and Savior. Next, get you a Bible and read your Bible. If you need a Bible, let us know. We can get you a free physical copy. Of a Bible. Amen. We will get Amen. that to you. We will get it. We will get it to you. Next, pray.
talk to God regularly. Mm -hmm. He wants to hear from you, and you need to hear from him. And lastly, last thing that you want to do, find you a church home. Yes, we know it's the year 2021, and you can find you a church home that you can watch online. But there is nothing like being in the building, gathering around, yeah, like-minded yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing with, with that is you want to get you go to a Bible teaching church where somebody can t help teach you and guide you in the Word of God and show you how to live this Christian life. Yeah. Because right now, you're what the Bible calls a babe in Christ. Respectfully, babies need help. Mm -hmm. They need they need help and they need love mm -hmm. and they need guidance. They need support and they need nourishment. And that's, that's what right. the body of Christ and that's what the church Amen. is going to do yes, for you. Yes, hey, yes, God yes, bless yes, you. Yes, Thank you. Yes. God, I thank God for this word. I pray that it was an encouragement yes. to yes. everybody Hallelujah. because Amen. God has said it. Yes. He's yes. going to do it. Hallelujah. Let your faith allow you to see it and experience it because again God is not just doing whatever he wants to do God is doing what he said and God is doing what our faith allows him to do amen amen amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah come on somebody clap your hands for Jesus we thank God we thank God we thank God for the word that the went forth today those of you who are viewing by social media God bless you we thank you for being a part of our worship service today here's what we want to say we love you to life and there's really nothing you can do about it we hope you accept the love that we give. It's genuine. We thank God so very much for you. Listen, we're going to have service here come Wednesday night at 6, uh, at six o'clock. That's our Bible study time. We look forward to you joining us at that, at that time. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so very, very much for those who have participated in our worship service today. You have promised through your word that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we give you glory and we give you praise for being a provider for us, Father. There may be somebody who needs healing, and the Bible lets us know Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted. So whatever your illness is, whatever is broken in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, through his Son and Holy Spirit, can heal and mend everything that's broken. He can make everything that's rough smooth, every crooked place straight in your life, and that's something that he wants to do. But as the Holy Spirit had Minister John to... Uh, to reflect back in the scripture of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. God is only going to be involved in the things that you invite him to because God cannot just do what he wants. He will not just do what he wants. God is a gentleman. And we've introduced you through our minister, John. He's, God has introduced himself to you, to, you, himself to you as a gentleman today. So receive him as the gentle man that he is, the loving God that he is. Here's the other thing that God wants me to pray for you, that, that you will take what you've heard today. Don't allow the enemy to steal this word from you. It's a very important word. It was timely and something that the world needed to hear. Because, because here's the problem. If we think that God can do what he wants, it erases us from responsibility. And we have a responsibility as humanity, whether we save or lost, we all have responsibility. And so God has given us that, and we live a life in the valley of decisions constantly. So I pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will be committed and they will, they, they'll be obedient to you, Father, now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your leadership for those who have recently given their life to Christ. We thank you so very, very much for them. And thank you for trusting us with them and for using us to be a part of their salvation experience. Father, we thank you so very much. So until next time, my friend, until next time, God bless you. May God keep you is our sincere prayer for you. Bye-bye now.